Hi folks! Hiya! How you doing? It's been another lovely day here in the northeast of Scotland, another lovely March day. And um, Rose and I have been digging up black currants. You just saw me there transplanting a few. And we're digging up some black currants, which I planted two years ago um, along the side of this willow hedge behind me. And this was planted as a nursery and um, with the intention of thinning out the black currants when they were large enough to take to a new planting location and thin them out to about one plant every couple of meters and then the black currants then become part of this windbreak hedge staggered with the willow. These black currants were planted in spring of 2017 as one foot cuttings. We pruned a whole bunch of the black currants in our kitchen garden and ended up with quite a bit of uh, hardwood cuttings and we just stuck them in the ground really easy and they've grown away over the last couple of seasons and now we're just managing to dig them up they're coming up very easy um, I'd have maybe have preferred to have done it a little bit uh, before these leaves started coming out I think they'll be fine and now we're tra transplanting them to various locations around the farm uh, including a new forest garden tree row at the top of the market garden and a few areas around in some of the other fields. Thought we put together another catch-up video for you today. Yeah, so in this catch-up video uh, we'll be looking at a few things. James ploughed up some nice tree rows that we measured out in the west field for our silver pasture system. Yeah, and you planted the garlic finally. We had from a fail we went to a win and Rosa managed to plant up a bit of the garlic. I also kind of decided to take the goats up to a different bit of the farm which is a bit of a goat paradise. Yeah. Uh, it's the north field, it needed a few bits of fencing kind of patched up temporarily but we ran them up there and they really loved it so we'll enjoy showing you that. Oh and we also um, let the ducks into the new Yes, into their system. new run. Yeah, which I think you saw a glimpse of in the first catch-up video but in uh, this one we have a look uh, in a bit more detail of their, their new home and run. We'll finish this catch-up video with us um, all planting a hawthorn hedge. Oh yeah. Yep, yeah. so we, um, which is a hedge that lines the one of the laneways that we use for moving the goats around the farm in. It's actually the one that we, we take them up to the north field past mm -hmm. that hedge. So, yeah. um, But also I think we should show everyone... No, yeah, I'm not that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, wind's catching up, so I'll quickly say so. I hope you enjoy this catch-up video. We'll we'll say hi at the end. Check you later. Check yeah, check check <laughs> one two. Morning folks, so you can see we've got the new duck system all set up and uh, seems to be working well. They've been in there for the last couple of days so it's nice and easy for me to use just on my usual pathway to the chickens in the morning. Chickens are just behind me there and I can just come past, lean over the fence, top up the ducks water, top up their food, I can let them out and then we've got this great pop hole that le lets them out of their yard and it's a duck alley that was made yesterday by my mom and Rosa. That's the ducks in the alley so it might take them a little while to 
get the idea of the fact that that hole opens in the fence. So this is an area of ground that we just had cleared the other day. There's a guy in the village who drives an excavator so he came up for a few hours and just leveled this piece of ground for us because we're going to be putting our, a new tool shed here. A shed for our BCS tractor and the implements plus some of our regular market garden tools and it's just right next to the market garden for ease of access. Right now it's a great source of ivy eating for the goats so we've got pea, elderly pea up here at the moment just giving her a treat letting her forage on some of the ivy that's growing on this um, bank of old wood that we've got here. Come into the west field with the BCS tractor and we've got the rotary plow on as an attachment. And the rotary plow is used, as the name suggests, as a plow to turn soil. It has a set of plowshares, a bit like a corkscrew, and rotates at 300 RPM, digs into the soil and throws the soil out to the right hand side. This is our number one implement for using to make raised beds in the market garden. But we also use it for many other reasons around the farm. We use it for plowing over fields, we use it for digging trenches to bury pipe, we've used it to make small scale swales. If you want to move soil, we've used it for leveling ground. So if you want to move soil, it's a great little implement for the BCS. And today we're in the west field to start plowing and cultivating the soil to plant our silver pasture tree rows here in the west field. Now time to do this one. Hope somebody's not hurt themselves on the tap. Wow, I've never seen this before. I've never seen a helicopter land on the tap. All right, that was quite a good first pass. Got that one a bit more straight. Uh, slightly more cultivated ground here. You can see this is where we had a broccoli and cauliflower crop last season. The stalks are still in the ground. So that's an ambulance and a police car coming up the Tappanoff car park road. So that means unfortunately I think there is somebody up in trouble up there on Tappanoff Hill. Incident response unit. Right, that's that pretty much done. So I'm gonna head in and have some lunch now. Two rows, pretty much prepped. Might cultivate it just a little bit more so that we can sow our cover crop of clover and other um, wildflower seed that we've got. But yeah, pretty good. taking the goats in because the weather has changed a little bit to, for the worst and so I've decided to call it quits with the plowing work I was doing. I think we're gonna head in uh, 
Do a bit of admin or something. folks it's a gorgeous day here at Tappanoff farm and um, that was a lovely way to start our day we were just taking the goats up to our north field which is an area that we very rarely use and it's absolutely perfect for the goats it's full of their natural diet um, raspberry canes pine trees rough grasses thistles it was a real joy to see them being introduced to their rosa was amazed because this seems to be the first time that we've left them in a grazing area and they haven't called to us as we've left. They were just so engrossed in what they were doing and with all the lovely forage to eat. So Rosa's busy just making sure that all the fences are definitely secure around the north field. I've just come up to the pond, which is the highest point of our property, to be able to look down on the west field where I was plowing the soil in readiness to plant our silver pasture tree rows and I just wanted to have a look and see how they look from up here. Looking pretty good, seemed to manage to get them quite straight. So the field that's closest to us. So this section of field here, this kind of long rectangle that you can see we haven't plowed any rows into, that's going to be left as a larger field um, and we're going to use that as a hay field. And then the goats will be grazed in between these tree rows using electric netting so that they don't eat the young trees and rotated through these alleyways of grazing. We're also going to experiment with growing some crops in some of these alleyways. You can see here there's some green fabric which we're starting to use to kill off the grass in that area so that we can plow it easier. So we're going to be doing our potato crop there this year plus possibly a forage crop for the goats so maybe a type of forage kale.
Also, over the last couple of days, I've been working in the um, small silver pasture system that we've been making for the goats, what we call goat wood. I finally got around to pollarding all the remaining trees that we had identified in the straight rows. And um, like I predicted, it's, it's quite a uh, different landscape there now. I haven't cleared away the brash, so we'll go and have a look at that. Um, but it's basically a lot of brash and these quite denuded, <laughs> pollarded trees. So here we are in Goatwood, the area behind the goat buyer. And yeah, you can see what I mean. It's quite a different landscape now. Now that I finally got around to pollarding the remaining trees. So you can see the pollarded trees behind me, tall single stem trees that have had the top spray cut off of them. And so what we're hoping is that they will regrow from the tops here and here and, and here. That should stimulate them to regrow and over the next few months and we'll leave that for a good few years to establish before we then cut that as a crop to give to the goats. The next job is to process all the wood and tree that's lying on the ground. We'll be able to take quite a lot of firewood from this and then also the smaller bits will first go to the goats because they'll enjoy eating some of the finer uh, branches and then we'll be using the rest to make a dead hedge which is a hedge uh, made from dead branches uh, to stop the deer and the goats being able to access some of our areas of established coppice. So another thing that's happening at the moment, we're just having a whole lot of hardcore delivered to be able to make more of a substantial road. And this is the track that goes from sort of the corner of my mother's house and past the polytunnel to the hens and the fields beyond that. And so it's quite a main access point for us. And this is where we're also having a new shed built to contain our BCS tractor and all the implements. Here it is behind me. I'm just gonna figure out how to spread that now. Doesn't quite look like enough. Anyway, we'll see. I'm gonna go up and see Rosa. She's in the market garden right now. And uh, she's getting on with planting out some of the garlic. We had a bit of trouble with our garlic. We probably started trying to plant it about a week ago. All right, pretty bad news, unfortunately. We've just opened up the garlic and it's it's nearly all rotten. We're not gonna be able to plant any of this today. So that was us just a few days ago. And since making that discovery, um, I sat and basically picked through all the very gross, moldy garlic. Um, I managed to salvage what I thought was around 300 cloves, which is what we plant in each of our 15 meter beds. So I decided to try and salvage something out of this bad situation and we'll have one bed of hard neck garlic and then two of some replacement soft neck garlic because we couldn't find any more hard neck garlic at this time of year. Um, so we'll be able to actually compare them which will be quite interesting because they're meant to be um, better suited to different types of climates. I've pretty much finished planting this bed. It's been a beautiful sunny day. We'll see how they do. Alright, I'm going to leave Rosa finishing off that bed of garlic and I'm going to get on with ploughing a future tree row at the top of the market garden. Um, in the previous episode you saw me pruning our fruit tree rows that we have here in the market garden and we've got two of those but we're going to be planting a third row this year and that's going to be here at the top of the market garden. Um, so we're going to be moving this fence line that's behind me that's going to be going up by about four meters and in there is going to be another um, 30 meter row of mixed apple and plum with um, Aliagnus as a nitrogen support species. So I'm going to check the site for any large rocks and then I'm going to get the BCS started and get plowing up this area of sod so that we can plant the fruit trees.
All right, that's the plowing done. Full strip, ready to plant fruit trees when they arrive. I'm just gonna go into the polytunnel now and get some of the hawthorn trees which we healed in. Because it's time to plant them now. So we've come out to Goatwood to plant a row of hawthorn. We've got my mum out to help us just now. And Asher the dog and all the chickens. <laughs> so we're going to plant the hawthorn at about um, 40 to 50 centimetres between each tree in a relatively straight line just running up and down this laneway. So we'll drop the hawthorn at the spacing and then we'll dig them in. So here's the hawthorn. It's already coming in to leaf because uh, of this warm spring that we're having and also these trees came from down in England. well and the goats just came home for the night so I think we're gonna call it day we've got some um, dog rows that we want to add to this hedge and I think we'll do that tomorrow it's time to go in and think about food and have a beer all right folks that was the catch-up video hope you enjoyed it I'm not sure we might have another catch-up coming soon. I know we keep catching up with yeah. the catch up so um, hopefully we'll we'll get on track at yeah. some point soon. But hopefully we'll get back onto track of doing regular up to the minute vlogs because what you've been watching was from a few weeks ago. So probably a bit in the next video um, we'll inc include some of the seeds I've been sowing in the polytunnel, um, a lot of the trees that um, James has been planting and we've done some hedgerows and things so we can take you on a little tour around. Mm -hmm. So if you like what you saw please subscribe to our channel like our videos and leave us a comment or two we'd love to hear from you until next time we'll see you soon bye bye